Hi, my name is Carly Solis. I am at George Mason University. I actually graduated from here with a bachelor's in physics and astronomy. I also volunteer at the National Air and Space Museum. We are here to talk to professors and students about exoplanets. My group's discovered over a dozen exoplanets orbiting other stars over the past five years, and it's been a really exciting time. I am an exoplanet astronomer and I do observational astronomy, so what I try to do is I look at other nearby stars to find evidence for planets around them. So I use telescopes around the world and in space to do that. There are a lot of advantages to using telescopes on the ground that you just can't do in space because of costs. You can have bigger telescopes on the ground uh, and you can collect more light so you can see fainter things and gather more signals. With telescopes in space, you can measure things much more precisely than you can, can from the ground because the Earth's atmosphere isn't in the way. I specifically study how our atmosphere affects the spectra that we look at when we're looking at transiting exoplanet, which you learned about before. When we are using a ground-based telescope and the spectra comes in through our atmosphere, the atmosphere interacts with that light and messes it up a little bit. So then when we're trying to see the red or blue shift, how far away or towards us the star is moving, it's a little bit messed up. So our readings have some error in them. So my research is helping others know how much error might be in their measurements. So since mine is completely simulated, I know every single component. So I can isolate exactly what the atmosphere is doing just to the spectra. I specifically do research studying M-dwarf type stars. So an M-dwarf star are the most abundant stars that we have in our universe. They're the most common. And they're also the coolest, the dimmest, and the smallest. When we look up at night, even though they're the most abundant, we don't actually see any of them with our naked eye. It's actually a really good thing when we're looking for exoplanets because since they're so dim, when an exoplanet transits in front of that star, it's going to block a lot more of its total light, making it a lot easier to see if there's an exoplanet. Three, two, one, zero. NASA launched the TESS mission, the Transient Exoplanet Survey Satellite in 2017, and has been surveying the entire sky in 27-day chunks over the course of two years, both the southern part of the sky and the northern part of the sky, which is hard to do from the ground. You know, in space, uh, you don't have the Earth in the way to see the whole sky. Uh, and it's been making tremendous number of discoveries. Over a thousand candidate planets have been discovered with that mission so far. And you can't do the science without the people to analyze that data. Those things go hand in hand. So we might get data from a telescope in the form of a digital image, but that's just it. You can look at it, but what do you got to learn from it? And to learn from that, you need people to interpret that data. I, my project basically is validating a uh, test exoplanet candidate. That's test with transiting exoplanet survey satellite. And my goal is to confirm or reject the detection made by test that satellite on the exoplanet. And we do that follow up with our on-campus telescope with a 0.8 meter reflecting telescope. Now we're at the George Mason University Observatory with Dr. Harold Geller. I'm the observatory director here at George Mason University and welcome to our observatory. How do we do observing here with such a big city right next door? You have the advantage of modern day electronics. It allows us to amplify signals of light coming from distant space. You also have the ability to focus in on specific frequencies of light so that the light from the city lights are diminished and you also have the light gathering power of a 32 inch diameter mirror which allows you to increase the intensity of the light that's available to you. This type of telescope cannot be used during the day. You don't want it to get anywhere near sunlight because of its uh, light intensification capabilities. It would literally melt the uh, mirrors that are used to focus the light. So this is only used at light and you're looking at dim objects that are up there in the sky. Thanks so much for showing us around. My pleasure.